Bitcoin recording its longest winning streak since September, with investors at least starting to embrace riskier assets once again. Still volatility, the name of the game in that winning streak, not to last long. What should we read into the bounce back? Bloomberg Sonali Basik with us now for more on these crypto market moves. Crick Sonali, what are you reading into this? Yeah, we do have a nice little bounce back here in Bitcoin asset prices. You have it stabilizing now, though, Emily, over at around $44,000. And so it's been on a tear for the past week or so, now down just a scotch, but we do have a big rise. I also want to point out not just Bitcoin, but tether because it's a good day to talk about stable coins and not just cryptocurrency back to digital assets but cryptocurrencies that are back to the dollar we have a real rise in tether over the last couple of days you see that about 40 percent and remember tether is affiliated with bitfinex which is where the doj had seized 3.6 billion dollars uh, in bitcoin stolen in a hack from bitfinex and of course lawmakers were talking about stable coins today all right, Shanali, hang on. Regulators and lawmakers have been trying to make sense of the crypto landscape. Earlier, the House Financial Services Committee held a hearing to talk about just that and more specifically stable coins. Treasury Undersecretary for Domestic Finance, Nellie Leong, was the sole witness at this hearing. She made the case for the need to oversee stable coin issuers and regulate crypto intermediaries. I want to bring in our next guest now, Chris Giancarlo. He is senior counsel at the law firm Wilkie, Farr & Gallagher, where he works on the digital assets team, and also the former chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Shanali, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Emily, and thank you, Chris, for being here. Chris, I want to take a listen really quickly to something Nelly Liang had said, and specifically, this is about technology firms and its engagement in cryptocurrencies. This is the issue of the separation of banking and commerce has been an issue that Congress has uh, grappled with for many years. Um, in this case, we believe stable coins as a payment instrument um, should not be issued by a technology firm. Now, Chris, as a former regulator yourself, what do you make of that idea? Actually, uh, thanks, Anali. You know, I think that was perhaps one of the biggest uh, moments of the hearing today uh, uh, I think her comment was that uh, basically technology firms need not apply for the future of, of payments and finance, that that should be limited to banks and particularly insured uh, uh, depository institutions. I think that's a quite remarkable statement, knowing that, in fact, it's been the tech industry, it's been, it's been innovators, not from the banking sector, but from technology that have really explored the ability to make money more accessible, uh, less latent, and much faster. Uh, and so I thought I think that comment was pretty remarkable. I mean, Americans don't like it when government picks winners and losers, but that seemed to be what we were hearing. Well, you yourself work with a lot of different companies like NYDIG that does work with banks to try to make cryptocurrencies more accessible. How may a comment like that take form when it comes to government regulation? Will it stop big tech companies from trying to get into cryptocurrency again? Well, the reference was made to the separation between investment banking and commercial banking and the Glass-Steagall Act as a basis for this uh, separation from technology firms from payments. But in fact, as we know, Glass-Steagall was mostly repealed uh, by Congress. And so it's not really a a living uh, pr precedent for what is sought to be done here. So, as you know, the President's Working Group, uh, which came out with a report of, uh, not too long ago, has proposed that really the development of stable coins be left to uh, the banking uh, industry under bank-like uh, regulation. And although there was a lot of un unanimity in today's report, certainly congressmen and women on both sides of the aisle seem to be quite aligned in the need for greater clarity, perhaps for congressional action, uh, for the, the importance that stablecoins are increasingly playing in the market, um, and the need for U.S. innovation. I think there was less unanimity around the idea of whether, bank regula whether the bank regulatory uh, regime should be brought to bear uh, to regulate stablecoins, and specifically whether stablecoin operators are, would be required uh, to be banking institutions. And so with that comment that you just pointed to, uh, that, that really technology firms should not apply, I think that kind of went against the grain, certainly at least half of the comments that we heard in today's hearing. Hmm. 
Chris, you know better than just about anyone how hard it is to keep up with financial technology, and the crypto marketplace is moving, evolving so fast. Can regulators keep up and then keep keeping up? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, almost by definition, regulators in our democratic societies never keep up. It's a very, it's a different approach than, say, Europe, which tries to adopt regulation in advance of innovation and tell innovators to actually innovate to the regulatory standard. In the United States, our approach has generally been to let innovation develop and then regulators catch up. So I'd say regulators catching up is not a design failure. It's kind of a design okay. feature of our system. What it means is that our innovators innovate to solve real problems. And what's happened in stable coins is they have innovated to solve, quite frankly, the shortcomings of the existing banking and payment system, which we know, increasingly know, has been under-inclusive of our fellow citizens, is too slow. It, it costs too much. There's too much rent-seeking behavior. And so um, this innovation that we're looking at, that Congress, as you say, is trying to catch up, has been solving real-world problems. And I think, and as I say this as a former regulator who's appeared before that committee t many times, the challenge is, how do we bring um, clear rules that protect against fraud and manipulation and bad behavior, but allow innovation to continue to make our financial system better, faster, right. more inclusive, and less costly. So then the question is when will we see crypto regulation, stablecoin regulation this year? How soon? Well, I, I, what you saw today actually is a real step forward from when I was appearing before this committee a few years ago, and they, quite frankly, were asking the basic elementary questions. What you really heard today was congressmen and women who are much further up the learning curve understand the challenges and are really grappling with it. Now, the fact of the matter is this year is an election year. This is a year where congressmen and women are looking for direction from the public but are unlikely to take, I think, legislative action this year. But the discussions that are taking place this year, I think, will result in legislation once we get through the election. Mm -hmm. And there's there's new uh, coalitions in the House ready to put this forward. And I hope Chris, they're bipartisan. We have less than a minute here left, but your opinion on this. A lot of people on Wall Street complain that the CFTC and the SEC don't talk. They are on different turfs. I'm wondering, especially because Gary Gensler was at the CFTC, will there be more coordination? And is this time any different? Well, Sonali, you're absolutely right. I was shocked when I arrived at the CFTC at how little the CFTC and the SEC talked on a regular basis. And I think one of the achievements uh, that we reached was to have a much more open dialogue. Chairman J uh, Jay Clayton and I established a regular cryptocurrency ad hoc uh, joint committee between our agencies that spoke regularly. I hope that's been continued under the new administration. I don't, I don't know the case, and I'm not drawing criticism. I just hope it has been continued, because it's so important that those two market regulators speak regularly, especially with this new and fast-moving, as you say, innovation.